Okie dokie. Well, hi everybody, and once again, it's cast time. Um, and as you can see, I'm, um, I'm going back to, uh, my desktop background. Um, uh, just, yeah, I'm gonna be using this. Um, the novelty on Darkest Dungeon just kind of wore off after a while. It just, plus, as is my, uh, interest in, interest in playing that game, I, I don't really have time to talk about it now, but, uh, but yeah, my, my, uh, my interest in playing, playing Darkest Dungeon is on the wane, so, but anyway, uh, anyway, matter for another time, uh, but anyway, um, uh, gonna have some music going in the background like always, and this time around it's gonna be, a uh, Bog Weaver, uh, Labyrinthine, so, this, I was actually wanting to play this, like, like a few days ago, uh, or like sometime last week, but just never got around to it for one reason or another. So, but yeah, let me go ahead and get that fired up. Okay, but anyway, um, past two days, no stream. Uh, I've just pretty much despite the fact that I, I only work two days I, despite the fact that I only work two days I'll pretty much run ragged um just and on top of that too they were both 10 hour shifts so yeah like I said I was pretty um pretty much exhausted when I got home um yesterday is just my body just did not want to get out of bed it was pretty much dead as a doornail so no, so no stream. No stream on Friday. Um, this morning, I was gonna try to get up and do one, but uh, I basically overslept. Like I said, my alarm went off. Um, my alarm went off. I shut it off. But then right after that, just fell right back asleep again. So I don't think I. I think my alarm went off at like 1.30, 1.45. And like I said, I killed the alarm, laid back down, and then all of a sudden it was like 4 o'clock. It's like 4 p.m. I'm like, fuck! So, so much for that. So I guess I really needed to sleep. But like I, but like I said, though, too, I was, I was pretty much wore out and beat up uh, during my uh, quote-unquote work week. But I guess is kind of a kind of an upside to uh to me having work on eight hour shifts recently i don't come home uh hurting and tired so much because again i'm only working on uh, eight days or eight days working only eight hours rather than ten and i'm gonna i'm gonna take a drink of some arizona green tea Yeah, I think uh, I think I walked a few miles in those two days. Just one side of the store to the other, uh, and the way it's feeling right now, um, I got a feeling this is either going to be a really short cast or a really long one. Um, Content-wise, as far as uh, what I want to talk about. I actually have a fair amount, but like I said, the way the way I'm feeling at the moment, it mm, this might be an Express Reader's Digest version. I don't know. I just have to play it by ear. But like I said, starting next week, um, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be back to being at work from uh, I'm back to being at work at 10 p.m. rather than 8 p.m. So. In an extra two hours, but hopefully, uh, since I'll probably be laying down around 4:30 a.m., which gives me a lot more, a lot more time to sleep, I'm hoping that I'll have uh, more energy tomorrow. So, but we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna turn this up from my end. Uh, I can hardly hear it. <sighs> oh. 
okay, second thing, and, um, and, uh, I, I tried playing some FX3 earlier, but unfortunately, it crashed. Uh, about five minutes in, and it just, it just up and crashed on me. I, which, just, it, for the longest time, it was working just fine, so, well, fun while it lasted, I guess. So it looks like we are now back to this. But, um, I think when I, when I last did my weekly matchup, I'm a little bit out of the red, but I'm still going to be, uh, I'm still going to have to get some more wins under my belt in order, in order to be more stable for this week. Okay, and then, um, and then, uh, for Zachariah, actually some new, uh, some new Postal 2 tables came out. I just, um, I think I found out about it, um, I want to say a couple days ago, uh, from a, from a channel called Game Test Play. But yeah, he was, uh, he was testing out the new Postal tables. I did the same thing, too. Um, I even made a video about it. I gotta look at something real quick. Okay. It it sounded like the music was coming out of my external speaker. Leading me to think I might have fucked up. Okay. So but anyway, um But yeah, played some postal. Or I should say played some postal pinball. And it, it went out it went alright. Um Played some of it a couple days ago, played some more of it today. But, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to make a video, I mean, I wanted to make another video of me playing some more Postal Pinball, but like I said, I just, I wasn't really talking much all through it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like my, it wasn't like the, uh, on my video where, uh, I actually talked quite a bit about the tables. This time around, not so much. Again, I'm guessing it's just due to lack of energy from the work week. So I think um, I had most of the video recorded, but again, as I just I just wasn't feeling it, I just ended up uh, killing it and just deleted the video. It's not worth keeping. But like I said, um, I'll probably have to try FX3 again tomorrow. I'll have to make another attempt on it. And then, and then same, and then same thing with uh, Zachariah. I'll probably, um, uh, I'll probably try to make another, uh, another video of it. Let me play more postal. So. Um, and then, speaking of videos, I also did another one. Um, I. I, I'll sort of kind of rehash what I was talking about on the uh, on the, the the Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition Druid Druid class. I did a video looking it over, but I'll do a sort of kind of rehash of that. Um, recently, I had a flashback about um, back when I played World of Warcraft. My my main class in there was the Druid, and for about for about the first two out of the four and a half years I played WoW, Druid was the only class I had. I didn't play any other. Because to me, the class had everything. Um, you could play, the Druid can play pretty much any role. Um, like tank, healer, melee DPS, range DPS. So it did it all. And then on top of that too, um, as you'd probably expect, you could also switch between animal forms, and you could also do it. You could also do it on the fly. Well, but yeah. So because of that, oh, and I, I let me rewind a little bit. And then um, you can even uh, you can even switch animal forms in the middle of combat. There, there might have been a cooldown. I can't remember. Like I said, it's it's been some odd years since I played the game. 
but yeah, so after so after this uh, little flashback, I thought I'd go ahead and um, pull up D and D Beyond, and then um just proceeded to check out the Druid class in there. Uh, no, 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 not not for me. It just maybe perhaps because I perhaps because I was spoiled and wow, but yeah, the uh, the D and D Druid it kind of sucks for what I want for what I want to do with it. Um, probably the big issue being um uh, in D and D you can um uh, you can switch between animal forms like only twice, and that's it. Or you can do it according to the game. You can only, you can switch two times. Um, basically you get two charges. And uh, you re you recharge those charges by either taking a short rest or a long rest. Um, that's kind of a new thing in this newest edition of D and D. Back in the day, you can only um, there was only one type of rest, the eight hour one, the one where you slept for eight hours. In this one here, there's two different types. There's a short rest, where you basically take a one hour nap, something that I often do in real life, and then there's the long rest again, the full. The full eight hour sleep. Well, the druid and the the druid and D and D, you can always you can always ship between animal forms twice. Per short or long rest. So, you you don't have near the functionality. You don't have near the functionality in D and D that you do in WoW. I mean, WoW got the druid class got the druid class right. Like, cause like like I said once again. You can you can switch between animal forms at any time, with um with next to no cooldown. So. So yeah, this is totally what I was not ho This is totally what I was not wanting, in in the um, in the D and D version. Because in there, and I I think I said this in my video too. One of the great things about playing a druid in WoW is, you basically you can do everything at once. So. If, for example, if I, my main, my favorite role, the tank, you know, I could, I could be a, you know, I could be a bear tank, charge into a bunch of monsters, but if, you know, but if, um, if the encounter is going nice and smooth, and, um, if I think, if I thought I could get away with it, and if I trusted my healer enough to be good enough at healing to keep me alive during this period, switch, you know, switch from bear form to cat form. Which is the melee DPS part of the druid class? Switch to cat form and just start um, start inflicting uh, bleed damage. Start you know inflicting uh, bleed damage over time effects on all the monsters, and then switch back to bear form and keep on tanking. Or, or if um, again the aforementioned you know bear tanking example, if for whatever reason one of my other party members suddenly just took a shit ton of damage all at once, like. Something knocked down 50% of her health, and again, if I think I could get away with it, if I think I could stay alive during this period, switch to, switch to tree form, and then start casting some heals on this party member, you know, some heal over time spells on him, to help keep her stable, to keep her from dying, and then switch back to bear again, and keep tanking. And then, in a third scenario, let's say I'm not bear tanking, you know, I'm the I'm the healer in the group, and if for some reason the the tank that's in the group suddenly disconnects for whatever reason disappears, the you know after you know after tanking a whole bunch of monsters, you know it's it's not the end of the world because then I could just switch from healing to bear to to bear tank and charge in, you know grab a hold of all those monsters, you know perhaps not even without breaking a sweat, you know and it, it doesn't. You know, just just because the tank left, it doesn't result in a party wipe. Again, because I can switch switch from uh, tree form to bear form, charge in, tank the monsters, and just keep right on going. But can't do that in D and D. Again, you can only uh, you can only shift twice per short or long rest. So you basically got to pick up a form and stick with it. I I can't you know, can't really do that in D and D. And then, um, 
You know, so in the aforementioned example, if I try to do this in D&D, no way. You know, I could be, I could be in the shape of a bear, tanking some monsters. Now, to be fair, probably, I think when you get to level 13 or 14 or something like that, you can, uh, you can cast some abilities while, uh, while staying in your bear form. I think, um, now that I think about it, in the uh, later expansions of WoW, you could already do that. There was like a, there was like a certain talent. I don't know the name of it, but, uh, if you're, uh, you can cast, say, I think it's called Moonfire. It's just a simple range, it's a ranged spell. It puts a damage over time effect on that target. You can cast that in any form. There's also a, a, a very basic heal spell called Restoration. It heals for a tiny amount, and it's also a heal over time. You can cast that in any form, but you can, uh, it's a, it's a talent that you have to, I, I don't, you, you don't, I don't think you have to actually unlock it. You automatically get it. I mean, talents and wild kind of works like the uh, skill trees in Diablo 2. It works sort of kind of like that, but you know, when you get to level I don't know, like level 30 or level 45, which you'll get to level 45 in WoW a lot faster than you'll get level 13 or 14 in Dungeons and Dragons. So, I mean, it's it's hardly an issue. But yeah, you, you get a talent, you choose, you get this, this talent, you choose it. You can cast a couple, two or three spells in any form. So yeah, but yeah, in D&D, Fifth edition, you get that kind, you get that ability too, but you don't get it until level thirteen or fourteen. So you gotta you, you gotta wait a while. But again, your versatility, the the versatility in D and D compared to WoW is basically in the, it basically goes down the toilet. So, but again, to be fair, there's. I mean, druids, druids in D and D, just like in WoW, they can they they, they can be spellcasters. But from from what little I know of the of the way spellcasting works in D and D, I don't think you have near the versatility that you have in WoW. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink. Yeah, definitely the, I mean, definitely the verdict on, um, the Druid, the verdict on the Druid in D&D, nope. So, unless, I might delve into it a little bit further, but, compared to, compared to the Mercy Monk that I created, that I created, that I created recently, Druid ain't got shit. Whereas, whereas, again, the way I have the Mercy Monk set up, I mean, the monk in there, they, you know, they got martial arts, you know, they're melee fighters, and they're healers. They're healers, and on top of that, too, I believe, uh, with the exception of the barbarian class, monks have the best mobility in the game. So, they're almost, they're almost what I'm, they're almost what I what I like about the Druid class and wow, it's all, you know, they can almost do everything at once. So, but like, like I, like I said, I gotta, I might, I might look into Druid further, but at this point, the Druid class in D&D &D is ass. I mean, at least, at least when compared to the Druid in WoW. And I think I also said this too in that video. This was probably one of the it's probably one of the things that kept me from playing tabletop D and D for a long time. It just the video games got me first, you know. So you know, it's like I could easily I could easily do in a video game, even even RPG RPG video games. I can do a those what would 
would fucking take me ages in a in a tabletop version. You know, it's like doing the doing the things that I'd want to do on a tabletop game that I could already do in a video game. It's like it's like the dungeon master would almost when he when he designs his dungeons and adventures and stuff like that. It's almost like he'd have to he'd have to put some kind of special inclusion in that dungeon just for me. Just you know, you know, just to be nice for a little bit of game balance. You don't have to design certain encounters, certain dungeon mechanics around this. You know, around this one ability I got. Just, you know, just so I could have a chance to use it. So, it's almost like it, the DM has to actually make extra work just to make it work. Just to make this class work. So. So, but, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record. But, I might look into the Druid class in D&D more. But, as of right now, I'm not even going to bother trying to create one. So. That's that on that. And then, um, one other thing I want to talk about. Now, for those that don't know, this is the behind-the-scenes portion of the video. I don't... I don't do this very often these days because I've already talked... I mean, I've already... I'm already using what I learned. So, it, it, was, it was something that when I first started doing these cast videos... I would, um, especially during the part when I started adding visuals, which was a totally new thing to me, whenever I learned something new, I would go ahead and do like a behind the scenes portion and, you know, show everybody what I learned. Because oftentimes, the, when learning new things, whenever, or whenever I learned something new about, you know, features and whatnot, mechanics, I would use them immediately on the next cast video and then do it behind the scenes to show everybody what I learned. So, so today, actually, this is, it's not a, it's nothing brand spanking new or anything, um, but, uh, but timestamps, um, it was something that just popped into my head a few days in one of my, uh, one of my more recent casts, I think it was sometime last week, but it was one that went like a half hour, 45 minutes, way longer than anticipated, and it just kind of dawned on me, hey, why not just, um, why not just, uh, separate them into timestamps, since it went so over long, and then, um, and then just kind of realizing that the way I do these casts these days, that, um, I oftentimes I have them, I now have them separate into different parts. You know, no, it, no longer do I do my cast videos the way I did when I first started doing them, where just post up the, um, just put a YouTube window up there, you know, of whatever music I was playing, and then just straight up freestyle talk. No, I, they're now being separated into parts, and whoops. I guess I can. Yeah, the the dates are kind of outdated. Um, August eighth. Yeah, I used to I used to update the dates, but it just I kind of slacked off there for about a month. So, but as as you can see, I separate my cast videos into parts now. But, you know, separate them into different things I want to talk about. So, it's more organized. So, so now that I'm doing that, I could probably just go ahead and add timestamps into them. You know, and, and you know, probably, and it, I thought about it too. It could be as a show of courtesy to some of these other people, you know. You know, ah, oh, shit, is he talking about pinball again? You know, then you're basically, whoever's, uh, whoever's watching these is now have to force to endure me talking about pinball or you know maybe they don't want to maybe they don't care about pinball and they want to you know they want to listen to something else of mine well now they can just skip on over it you know or maybe they were um they were either hitting the j key or the l key whatever moves you forward or back 10 seconds just maybe hitting that l key 
you know, try to skip past all the stuff. I don't care about pinball. I don't care. I want to go to the next thing you're talking about. You know, that kind of thing. So, adding timestamp, you know, adding the timestamps could be, you know, can make life easier for my, uh, for my viewers. But, but like I said too, um, back when I first started doing these uh, videos, there wasn't there wasn't any way the timestamps were gonna work because I was it would I mean I would be all over the place. It was practically a uh, it was it was practically practically a stream of consciousness talking. Just subjects just constantly drifting back and forth and one up and down and all around just every every which way. In fact, that's exactly what happened with the uh, with the Druid video I made today. If I'd have known to, maybe I should, you know, maybe I should make, maybe I should be more organized in my thoughts. Maybe I, if I'm more, or, maybe I should have been more organized when doing this Druid video. I could have made it more timestamp friendly, but it, it just wasn't going to happen because I think I, I actually put it in my description on my Druid video. Um, I just constantly non-stop chatter, blah, 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 you know, non-stop diarrhea at the mouth, but like it, it's like I said a few moments ago um I was pretty much a it was it was me talking stream of consciousness just one co moving from one thought to the next one concept to the next um I was trying to go systematically from the you know top of the article down to the bottom it didn't really happen that way I would start talking down down and down towards the article and all of a sudden bah! I'd have to like scroll back up to some other part of the article and talk about it and then boom back down to what I was originally talking about. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take another drink here. I'm talking myself, horse. And that was another reason I uh, started using timestamps. You know, and I actually said this about um, any other, any of my other videos where I was gonna do a behind the scenes portion. Um, some people, uh, more or less myself included there's times I actually don't want to see how your videos get made you know I don't oh what was it um uh, I probably sh if I remember to I might talk about this more but uh critical role it's the um the the d and d series is a d uh, d and d live stream extremely popular it it basically launched fifth edition or i should say it made fifth edition it put it on the map it got it popular but uh, they also had a i think they had a behind the scenes portion of they, they they did a tour of their studio and how they did the cameras and stuff like that i actually didn't want to see that it just it just spoiled a lot of stuff, but I'm based on that. I'm pretty sure there's a and there's a there was other programs and shows and whatnot that had it behind the scenes. I'll check it out just out of curiosity, but I end up feeling bad. I end up feeling bad afterwards. You know, sometimes it in a kind of related yet unrelated. One of my favorite YouTube channels, Second Thought. One of the great things about that channel is uh, he never showed his face. Totally un... You know, you didn't know who he was, but he was also... For those that don't know, he's a... It's a, it's a socialist channel. He talks about socialism. I'm not a socialist myself. But, um... But it... Great content to watch, though. But the beauty of it, though, is uh, he never revealed himself. He never showed his face. So it was it was almost like watching Anonymous. But recently, the recent videos, he actually did start showing himself. So that that killed it. That killed the immersion. So, but like I said, it it's related. I mean, it's it's unrelated yet related at the same time. Again, the, the spoiler factor. But, so, to rewind all the way back to what I was originally wanting to talk about, you know, maybe some people don't want to see how my cast videos are made. I mean, 
I, I, I know I know they're ghetto. Um, I know they're ghetto, but then again, I don't want to be spending a whole month talking about stuff that I did in one day. So, yeah, making an edit, making and editing videos can take that long. It's a lot of work involved. I mean, once again, I don't want to, I don't want to spend a whole month making a video about something that I did on one day. So, so yeah, they're gonna be ghetto. But even then, maybe you don't want. Maybe you don't want spoilers on this. Maybe you don't want to see how these videos get made. So, but now, now that I can uh, add timestamps, you know, then you can, you'll have it, you know, you'll have an easier, you know, you have an easier time avoiding them. So, so but. Kind of a kind of a side note. For for those that might complain that if my music is too loud or too quiet, if you can see uh, desktop audio, that's what I'm looking at. My goal is to try to keep the sound level somewhere between the 35 to 30 range. That seems to be the comfort zone. I mean, I could have it all the way up. That's pretty loud right there, I imagine. Or like I said, I think the the sweet spot is uh 35 to 30. If I'm wrong on this, let me know. But when I when I play these videos back to see how loud they are, this 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 seems to be my own comfort zone. You can you can hear it's in the background, but yet it's not overpowering. And um. This isn't 100% accurate. And then speaking of that, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here. Now that I'm talking about it. Okay, but anyway, um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good. I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say today, so... So, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. Always do. And then, um, I should be on again tomorrow. So, hopefully I'll have more energy then. After getting a, after getting a full day's sleep. So, but... Otherwise, um, but otherwise, thanks for your, once again, thanks for, um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I think I just, oh, deja vu. I think I just sounded like a broken record, broken record. But anyway, I gotta go. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.